Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The energy regulator has approved two more licenses required for an independent grid company to begin operating. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the significance of the development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. These are not the first licenses to be transferred from ESCOM to the National Transmission Company of South Africa. That's correct. Uh, in July, NERSA made the, the decision to, for the physical assets, the actual transmission lines, for the operation of that to be transferred uh, from ESCOM to the NTCSA. And there was a bit of concern at the time because this was an integrated license application. It wanted the physical assets uh, at, the, at the new company as well as the trading license, as well as the import-export license. So there was a feeling, now what is, what is going to take place? Is this uh, company going to be in a position to start operating and start trading? And uh, I must say that the electricity energy regulator, the highest decision-making body, has moved fairly rapidly and now uh, last week has approved uh, by all three of the licenses. So this is the trading and the import-export license. That's quite crucial because without that sort of integrated three license transfer, uh, the company wouldn't have been able to, uh, to operate as it's, as it's intended. And so it's a big decision and it lays the basis now for this grid company that is being unbundled from the vertically integrated monopoly business of Eskom. Uh, and we're going to see other unbundlings, the generation and the distribution businesses are also in the process of being unbundled. Uh, starting to get into a position where they can start separately running their businesses. So it's, it's a big step uh, in the unbundling, but we must remember that all these businesses will remain under Eskom Holdings for the foreseeable future. So there will be a holding company with these three independent companies and they'll all be state owned. When will the NTCSA start operating and what still needs to be done? Yes, this will be the first of the three entities to start operating separately. And I think Eskom's view now is that it's going to start trading from the beginning of its next financial year. And we know that Eskom's financial year runs from April 1 to the end of March. So from April 1 next year, we should see this independent business in play and operationalized. I think there are a number of additional steps. Now, that's before I say that, that, that is a a delay from what was initially envisaged. Uh, you know, when uh, the roadmap for Eskom was published back in 2019, there was a view that this could happen much quicker. But be that as it may, these, there's a, it's just a major change management exercise. It's a major re corporate restructuring uh, at a time when Eskom has got many other balls in the air, as we know, with, the, with load shedding. But this is fundamental to ending load shedding and placing the business on a, f a fit for the future type of track. So it is delayed, but we are getting visibility now that, the, that it's going to start trading from the beginning of its next financial year. But there are still other decisions that need to be made. A crucial one is the appointment of an independent board. And now we understand that those names have been submitted to the Public Enterprises Minister, Praveen Gordon, and that a decision, well, it's been said to be imminent for quite some time, but it's said to be nearing a, a conclusion there, because that, that is an important piece in the puzzle. The other is to get, and it's crucial, to get lender consent. We know that Eskom is a highly indebted entity. So in this restructuring process, the different three entities are going to be allocated their debt. Now we know that most of the, the debt is linked to the generation business. So the way that this is allocated is very crucial because if this uh, NTCSA is overly burdened by debt or overly encumbered, it's going to be even more difficult to roll out the grid infrastructure that is so desperately needed to unlock the new generation capacity that is needed. So that's going to be a crucial next step. So the, the lender consent and the allocation of the debt is important. Then um, because the legislation is not yet in place for the transmission system operator and defining that, we have a transitional arrangement and we can see that in the license. So the physical assets license has been for 20, is for 25 years. The trading license is actually only approved for five years. And I think that's really about the transitional arrangement because the final roles and responsibilities are still going to be defined through the legislation and that process is only starting. So this is going to allow for 
uh, this this business, the NTCSA, to do the physical asset management, the um, the management of the system, system operation, also the different markets that it operates, the imports, the trading, as well as I think, uh, and, and that is another condition precedent, to allow them to be the uh, central purchasing authority for what used to be in the, in the single business of Eskom, so to be the single buyer. Um, so we know there's, there's been a number of contracts that have been placed through public procurement, especially with renewable providers, and there needs to be a buyer for that, and it's going to reside, I think, in this business. Whether that's going to be the end state, we'll have to see what comes out of the legislation, but there's these conditions, and I think that's why it's not going to happen as soon as uh, people had wanted, and it's going to be hopefully trading from the 1st of April. In parallel, Parliament has started the comment phase for the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill. That's right. So that bill is very important to defining the future architecture of the uh, industry, including this grid company the and the uh, transmission system operator. And there's, we're really at the early stages of that. We know it's been massively delayed from uh, Cabinet approval very much earlier in the year to actually getting it tabled getting this uh, bill tabled in Parliament has been very protracted. They still have no clear explanation as to why that, that is the case, but again, be that as it may, we now have the bill tabled and we now have the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee, the Mineral Resources and Energy Portfolio, putting out adverts over the weekend to say we want in comments. They've set a deadline, I think, for uh, sometime in October, mid-October, for those written comments and also to give an indication whether people want to make oral uh, representations to the committee. That's just the first step, you know, so we're really approaching, uh, you know, end of September here. That's just the first step for the Portfolio Committee. The Standing Committee will also have to go through this process, which is the, the second house in Parliament, the NCOP. They'll also have to go through their processes. There may have to be provincial hearings as well because this has such wide-reaching, uh, far-reaching implications. So I think we're really at the beginning of this process. Whether this will all be wrapped up before next year's elections is, is, is not clear at all. But I think that is the intention, to try to have this uh, bill passed back to the president for signing uh, before the elections. Now, we don't know when the elections will be, but they have to be between May and August next year. So depending on when those are called, that will determine, I think, whether this legislation is fully amended during this current parliamentary term. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.